get a bunch of students prepared for programs in computing, right, going forward, and they go to college and they want to do this, are, is there sufficient capacity there? So I'll give you a couple data points just to make the point clear. About three years ago, computer science became the most popular major at Stanford. First time ever that any engineering major at Stanford had become the most popular major. At this point, one in five students at Stanford majors in computer science, so 20% of the undergraduate population. There are 54 majors at Stanford. So we have about 2% of the faculty teaching 20% of the units of the school. <laughs> Right, so it's not like our workload is you know 1.5 times our colleague or two times our colleague. It is 10 times in terms of the number of units we teach, and universities are slow-moving beasts. Right, we have this thing called tenure, and that means that the the ship moves slowly. So what we need to think about is how do we think about the capacity in higher education meeting this growing demand in K-12, and part of it is we need to think about what that pipeline looks like to make it. Uh, possible for these students to move on. One of the big tragedies, I think, is as these barriers go up, so many schools are doing this, they're saying we're gonna limit enrollment, we're gonna have GPA requirements. The students that that disproportionately impacts are women and minorities who just, there's tons of research that shows that they have less exposure to computing prior to college. So one of the big things that can happen in K-12, if you really make it available to all students, you help close that gap in terms of the amount of exposure prior to going to college. You can't get, it's gonna be hard to get rid of it completely. I have no delusions about that. But if you can try to shrink that gap, that means there's more possibilities and more competitiveness at college. But at the same time, you need to grow those opportunities. How that also fits in with the K-12 pipeline is ways that we can work together with a partner to be able to share things like curriculum. So if an AP class is really supposed to be equivalent to a first year course at a college, that means locally there's probably a college that would have materials for their first year course that they could share and curricula and help with professional development and could we think about partnerships along those lines and then have it be a two-way street where that information goes back and forth. Um, I think another thing you can also think about is a lot of colleges are interested in trying to build that pipeline. Even though we're overworked, as crazy as it sounds, we want more students in computing because it's important for the students. And so one of the things we think about are what are the right kinds of summer programs? If we were gonna have partnerships, what's the right kind of professional development that would actually help? And that's the place where I think there's, there's openness. You have to be aware that we're also overworked, right? But there's openness <laughs> to try to be able to help build this bridge so we can actually get more students to cross it.